What's up guys? Today I'm going to show in full detail how to install an aftermarket radio into just about any vehicle. The unit we'll be installing is the powerful new Atoto S8 MS. For more info on this, check out my full review and sound test video. There's links in the description and discount codes. This is a double din unit, but the procedure will be the same with most aftermarket radios and vehicles. We're first going to look at everything that comes in the box and check out the quality of the accessories and the unit itself. Then we'll do a detailed demonstration on how to properly connect the wiring harness, install the dash kits. Then I'll show you how I installed it into my 1994 Buick Roadmaster, which was pretty custom. If you have GMs from around that era, mid-90s, uh, even into the early 2000s, all the radios were kind of same. So check this out for that. But like I said, I'm also going to show how to install it in a multiple array of vehicles. Then we'll end it with another sound test. But now, let's go ahead and get into it. So a quick look at everything inside the box. We will start with the head unit. Now one thing you might note is that I already have the side doubled in panels on it, but it is rather small and that's good because there's a lot of wires and connections that can actually connect to this and being small like that actually gives you no, you know more room. That being said, it feels very substantial and it feels very well made. One thing we can notice right off the bat is we do have six buttons on the bottom. It is a power slash mute button, volume up and down, a navigate left and right, home slash microphone button. Then on the bottom right we have a reset button and then the internal mic is actually located on the top left. So far, so good. Very, very impressed. So also in the box, we get a 4G antenna. Also has a gold connector on it, which is pretty cool, I thought. Next, we have the main harness. This also includes a 3.5 millimeter jack for steering wheel connection, which I will not be using, but we will be going into how to set that up in the next one. And the next harness we have, which is another kind of important one, actually has a 4G SIM slot on it, which this holds a SIM card. Now this also has a subwoofer out, a left and right auxiliary input, as well as a video input. And this is our remote wire. And look at the attention to detail. I like how they actually put this little cap on this, and they've done this on other wires that could potentially not be used. That's good so it doesn't short out on anything else or build corrosion. So far the connectors seem really well made. I don't see any excess plastic uh, from taking off the mold. We have shielded wires in there, you can see, and it also looks like they're using a pretty decent value of uh, heat shrink on here too. Usually the heat shrink is so bad. These, I'm, I'm liking it so far. It's amazing the quality that you're getting for this price. Another thing I didn't mention on there that that 3.5 for that second actor had was for this. It comes with a lavalier microphone. And this is a pretty run of the mill, a little bit better than, you know, some of the cheaper ones I've seen. It comes with double-sided tape. It also has a little clip that will stick into there as well, so you can clip it or stick it. Okay, so real quick to show you what I was talking about, the extra plastic coming out of the molds. I don't know how well we're going to be able to see this, but can you see that little bit of plastic? It's kind of stuck out. There's a little bit right there. There's another one. This is from that dual TV. Actually, this is from the Jensen uh, JB10A, I believe that's what it is that I just did. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, that little bit of extra kind of shows, you know, attention to detail and, uh, I guess it doesn't really show quality, but it also comes with these two and these two look pretty identical. They are basically just USBs that connect in, but one is for your phone link, for your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto, and then the other one is for an external storage. It does run Android 10. We also have this little wire harness here. This contains your Bluetooth antenna, Wi-Fi antenna, uh, the parking brake, and look at all of these. Also have those caps on them. I really like that. And then your rear camera input. Then as far as integration, uh, these are the last two, but look at a Toto thought of everything. Not only do they have a subwoofer output RCA, they also give you two line out converters. So pretty much you could add three external amplifiers to this head unit, and it's very, very appreciated that they put those in there. After that, you have bracketry for your double den. This is what we will be using, but like I said, I'm going to be going into multiple ways how to install this in my next video. 
Then we got pretty much your brochures. We have a bracket assembly guide. You have your basic system operation manual. This is a panel operation and cable connection instruction and the Atoto warranty online support. And that's one thing that Atoto very, very much strides for is their support. Now it does also come with a trim piece and one of the coolest things I think, um, I've watched a couple videos on these and one of the only thing that people reviewing it or whatever have mentioned about it is the glare that comes off of that beautiful QLED screen. Atoto has added actually two screen protectors. One is HD film, which means it's super clear, but they give you a frosted film one. And I didn't really see anyone else mention this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna give it a matte finish and it's gonna really cut down on that glare. So now another thing you might need, which I'm not gonna need right away, is a dash kit. I will leave the links where I found mine down in the description. This is just a Metro brand one. But another thing you're gonna to wanna to get, and this is very important and crucial, and this is the adapter which connects to your car, which allows you to wire in your harness. This is from a different one, but this is what I'm gonna to have to wire in to the harness for the Atoto. Another thing you're gonna need is an antenna adapter. Very cheap, very easy to get. And in my case, I had to make uh, some kind of spacer plates for the side, but it looks awesome. It's gonna turn out so great. And now for connecting the harness. Now what this is, is this is an aftermarket, I believe this is a Metra or a Skosh brand. This is an adapter, this is a wire harness adapter. Now what this does is this allows you to connect a wire harness from literally any aftermarket, uh, not just a Toto, from any aftermarket unit to this, and then this connects to the factory harness in your car. These are, you know, pretty much vehicle specific and you can get these at Walmart, you can get these online at Amazon, you can get them anywhere. Uh, basically, you have to get the one for your vehicle. But what they do is these, all of these colors of these wires are universal. Now, if you have a color that is on, you know, like let's say this a Toto and you don't have the same color on this, that means that your car doesn't, you know, have the capability for what you're trying to hook up. So for example, I don't have steering wheel controls, therefore these are gonna be kind of put to the side and I'm just gonna hook up. This is kind of daunting, but it's very easy. All you're doing is literally matching the colors and then connecting them. Now, the point that I wanted to make and showing this, and I'm not gonna go through and show every single wire, but the best way to connect these, I think, is to A, get the uh, type of connectors that where one can snap into the other and then you know they snap apart that way you can use you know different wiring harnesses if you need to if you plan on changing stuff out but what I like to do I like to get these solder sticks and what these are is it's just a little bit of solder in the middle and then you put just a little bit of heat on this and it melts it but what I like to do is we'll take this black and white wire for example I like to take it and put it all the way through and then we will find the other black and white wire which is front left negative and then this is the fun part what I do is take them and kind of go like that and then you fold one one way and you fold the other the other way you just keep doing that this is actually a NASA recommended way for doing an electrical joint and then you just kind of spin them and then you will get something like that now what you can do is take this and then actually slide it if this thing would actually slide it all the way down to where you get on your joints then you hit it with the heat now I don't have an actual heat gun so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these little torch things you really gotta watch your fingers with this though but um, see if I can do this in shot. So now what you're doing is you're not actually hitting it with the end of the blue flame. You wanna go you know, a couple millimeters past that, maybe a quarter inch, eighth of an inch. You can just feel the heat from it. You will see it all start to shrink. And then you'll see the solder actually start to melt 
Okay, something like that. And then I will follow suit with each one. Now, what that does is you get a nice mechanical joint twisted together, plus you have uh, you know, your corrosion resistance as well as it is soldered. So you're pretty much covered on all bases. Another thing you can do is you can take some heat shrink tubing. And I like this stuff because it's got uh, the heat activated ad adhesive sealant. So they're kind of marine type, but you can also put that over this. I think it's kind of redundant, but um, uh, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of moisture and stuff that builds up underneath your, uh, you know, in your dash. I'm very sorry for the focusing problems. Um, I'm having a problem with my camera and uh, it only focuses close up. It doesn't focus far away for some reason, but okay. So there we go. Those work very, very well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to need an RCA splitter. This is a Metro one. I got this from Walmart. You can get them online. And for our green one, I wish I had a piece of heat sink. Basically, this is going to connect into here. But what I wanted to have was a piece of heat sink that I could just put over this, but I'm out of all my big heat sink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this, but I'm going to wrap it with some tape just so it doesn't, you know, come loose or vibrate its way out or whatever. So pretty much something like that. That's pretty much all we have to do as far as connecting our wires together. Okay, so first things first, I have my RCAs connected. Um, I went ahead and taped them. That's where it goes to the harness. Don't worry about this white one. That goes to my HVAC. This is the factory side for my harness. That's what our adapter is going to be connecting into. So this is the smaller of the harnesses. I'm not going to be using any of this, but I might eventually, hopefully, will be using because I'm going to hopefully be installing a backup camera. So we will be using this. Um, I also have my phone lane, my external storage uh, connectors. They are running down. They're going to go down underneath the dash and then there's actually a spot up under here where I can tuck them away nice and neat. Eventually I'm going to route them back up and have them kind of just hang out in that drawer and uh, so for whenever I use them I can just kind of open that and they will be there. I think that's going to work really well. So um, connecting the main harness that's super easy. That's just plug and play. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the 4G antenna, as well as the GPS antenna. A lot of people are taking them and they're going out onto the dash. I don't want to do that. Underneath this dash mat is just a piece of plastic. Your GPS and everything's going to be able to go through there just fine. So I don't have a lot of space up here because I have my HVAC unit out and I was just kind of testing to see if I could put it up there. I think I'm going to put it on the back here, uh, both of them, because like I said, there's so much room that you are granted with the way the Satoto is designed. So basically to do this, what you wanna do before you peel off this backing, you wanna clean off your area and scuff it up. That's gonna give this double-sided tape something to stick to. Uh, I just use sandpaper, you don't have to use sandpaper, you can literally use a screwdriver or something, just kinda of scratch it up, get a bunch of marks in there. So, yep, these last two antennas, those are gonna be the last two things that I have to hook up, I believe. All right, so there we go. There's everything all hooked up. Got those two back there. Was able to kind of stuff the remainder of the wire over there on the side. So now we have every single one of our hookups that we need. Well, actually, hold on. Okay, now everything is hooked up. So pretty much, I mean, that's all you have to do. I think those will work just fine there. Um, yeah, we're going to have more than enough room to fit everything in there. Okay, I apologize for the neighbors cutting the lawn. I'm going to show you pretty much how to install the Atoto with an aftermarket, uh, well, from Metra with a dash kit. Now, this is not the proper dash kit for this vehicle, and we'll get into that in a second. But it's very, very easy, and it's not daunting at all. Pretty much, you put your metal side pieces on the Atoto, and then uh, your dash install kit will actually come with kind of the same things. And you will see that these little tabs pretty much line up with your factory where your screws go. So basically, we would have that on there. Now this is not the right one, so it doesn't fit in there all the way properly. But pretty much you would do that, and then you have your trim piece, which takes up the space around it. And as you can see, this is my trim piece. And as you can see, it, it doesn't really work. And that's a problem that I have literally with both of my GM vehicles. 
This is a 2005 Chevy Colorado. My other vehicle is a 1994 Buick Roadmaster. And that one I have to do some custom stuff for. This one I had a single DIN in. And you can see, I think you can see, I had to cut out a little notch there for my single DIN to actually fit in here. This step is pretty much uh, dependent on the vehicle and there's very many different vehicles and styles. I'm gonna leave a link down where you can find one of these dash kits down in the description. But for a lot of these GMs I've noticed, they literally, a GM, most of them from I think the late 80s up to, uh, well, present day, have pretty much a double DIN in them. So in this instance, we're gonna use everything that a Toto supplied for bracketry. You're gonna wanna have your side pieces on as well as these. And if you notice, that's really all you need. You don't need for these GMs to buy, we're just mocking everything up, but you don't need to buy anything separate. Now again, note that is cut out, so it's not like it once was, but with some adjusting here, we would pull that out, make sure everything is right. I don't have that in all the way, but they fit just fine. I guess this would be a better way to demonstrate. You can see it pretty much lines all up, except for that side on the left where I had cut out. And so now, you know, it's kind of not ideal to have to make marks or, you know, cut out your actual dash piece. That's what these kits are for, and these kits will help you a lot. But now, like on my 94 Buick Roadmaster, there's something much different that I'm gonna have to do. So if you own a 1994 Buick Roadmaster, there's probably a lot of uh, around 94 for GM, a lot of change during that time. And you may have the same problem, but they're a double din size, but not really. They're a little bit small. And for example, this is the old boss head unit that was in it. And the only reason why I got around it was because I never used CDs. So you would only see this part. And I think the bottom was actually cut off too when it was actually in there. So I didn't really have any way to secure it. And I just kind of, I forgot what I did to secure it, but I secured it not properly, but it worked well enough. As you can see, I actually have taken and cut uh, the top as well as piece of the bottom off and what that does is that allows my head unit to actually fit in but it literally it fits in from the front so now this is very cool um, but what it does is as you can see there's voids on the side so what I did for that was I made these little uh, kind of trim pieces to go into the side and kind of go like that and they give it a cool little kind of stepped uh presentation i don't know what you would call it it looks very very clean and very cool now you're probably asking well how are you going to actually secure it uh i thought of something pretty cool check this out okay so now here we see the back side and basically what i'm going to do is put one of these on the side what that is going to do is actually going to make it so the head unit can't pull out. And what I did was I cut it just perfect to where the trim will catch so it won't actually go forward either. So now all I have to do is put this like this, pull up on this, put some pressure there while pushing down on this bracket, and then uh, run my screws. And then pretty much the head unit is going to be part of this whole piece of the dash. Unfortunately, on these uh, older cars, you have to take out this whole dash piece, but it's not a big deal. They just kind of pop in and pop out. But it looks like I'm gonna have to redo the uh, foam gasketing around here. Uh, that stuff just kind of goes over age. You gotta think, this is a 30-year-old dash piece and it's still hanging in there, so it sucks to have to cut it, but pretty much with any double din, it's gonna be that way. All right, so here is the finished install. If you wanna see uh, more on this head unit and you wanna you know, check out the features and stuff, which this thing is packed with, go ahead and check out that other video. I'll leave a link in the description as well as a link for discount codes if you want to buy this Atoto head unit, which I definitely recommend. This thing is a powerhouse. But again, we have 
the M Audio mic and I'm uh, gonna try to give a pretty good sound demonstration. Now I have Smoke Jacket Blues queued up on my phone and let's see, oh, didn't even have to say anything. This is Pioneers from Track Tribe. Smoke Jacket Blues is also Track Tribe, so here we go. Okay, so there you go guys. That was the full install of the Atoto S8MS. Don't forget we got links down in the description as well as discount codes for the Atoto S8MS. I'm also going to leave links down in the description for wiring harness adapters as well as dash kits. But if you have any other questions other than that, please let me know down in the comments. And as always, I appreciate you guys so much and thank you for watching and tune in next time because we got a lot more coming and I think you're going to like it. Oh, also subscribe, like, comment, all that. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.